speaker, coach. He teaches improv. He he is a man of many talents, and he's there to here today to share some of those talents with us on how the how we can uncover humor in our speaking. Please welcome Mark Guy. So I would like to tell you a dirty joke, but don't worry, it's 100% organic. Some of you are probably thinking, what is this joke at this time of the day? And it's exactly what you think it is. As you have heard in my introduction, I am a Toastmaster, and also I get the great privilege to teach improv for the last four and a half years online once a week to people diverse audiences from all over the world and a few weeks ago one of my students had this story that actually is a reality uh, based on the time when she was a little girl who lived in ohio on the farm she told the story about her younger brother who was tasked to clean um, after the animals in a barn but he was such a such a uh, boisterous young man as he started running and running and running around and he had these big boots that were a few sizes too big and of course as the young boys do he fell right his face front into the poop and apparently his mom before she let him back into the house she had to hose him his water but just like the young boys do he started to run again into the barn and he fell face down into the poop once again within the span of one hour. So it is a d dirty joke, but it is 100% organic. So one of the things I wanted to share today is I had the great privilege for the last two and a half years to travel, to travel the world. And one of the things I have learned is that the humor across our globe is different from one country to the next. Uh, and if you just give me that privilege, I will explain what I mean. Um, for example, in the United States, um, you know, as you as a pedestrian, you are almost a king or a queen. You can go anywhere and all of the cars have to yield. But not so in Central Asia or in just Eastern Europe. It seems that the drivers take a special delight to <laughs> not just to find you, but actually they i think they have a meeting just like this and they discuss how many pedestrians did you hit today oh okay five how many pedestrians did you hit victor oh okay seven and they have a belt who has the most pedestrians they're gonna hit during the day finally when i first uh, started my travels i went to united arab emirates then turkey then georgia then kazakhstan uh, and a few other countries as well and it seems that the personal space is non-existent in the rest of the world as compared to the United States. So I'm standing there in, in the line trying to check out my items. And I can feel somebody's breathing down the back of my neck. And I'm giving them the, the, the dirty eye, just like I gave you with my dirty joke. And, you know, gave them a dirty eye. And I thought, okay, that's sufficient. So I walked forward one step. And turns out... that. They saw the space and they walked towards me again. It is the most uncomfortable. There's no personal space. Or well, maybe it is, but it's just very compressed. So as you listen to the sound of my voice and trying to uncover, find, and add humor to your presentations in Toastmasters and beyond, I challenge you to look outside of the normal outside of the routine and become a humor collector just like i have in the last two years and a half which i never thought i'd be in this position but then i had this uh, brilliant idea that i wanted to share with everyone and it came from the largest public university in the world you know what it is it's the youtube university as i sit there and i enjoyed my uh, adult drink i was watching you know, the, whatever the YouTube algorithm is going to bring up. And this particular day, it brought up something I had never seen before. It brought a channel from this gentleman. His name, um, it escapes me, but I know the name of the channel. It is, it is called Beard Meets Food. Beard 
meets food. Essentially, it's a gentleman from UK. He has a very thin frame. He has a big black beard. He goes to Iceland, UK. He went to Las Vegas to the Hark heart attack grill and all over different places and he challenges himself himself to eat or consume or or you know down inordinate amounts of food so for example in one hour he has to eat for example maybe five six seven eight burgers or six pizzas or a big part of steak like you know like one of those steaks you eat the steak it's free and it turns out he almost never loses it's so he has 4 million subscribers on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to him, it is the most entertaining. He just released a video from Iceland. It's like 1.2 million views in 20 hours. It's amazing. People apparently love to watch other people eat competitively. And after that, YouTube served me this other video saying uh, from a medical doctor from Texas. And he said that apparently it's a competitive eating. It's actually a sport category that you can train your body to expand certain parts of your anatomy. And that's not what you think. And it expands in your body and you can consume all this in food in a short period of time. And I thought, well, if you can expand in a large parts of your body, what else can you expand? And that is my offer to you, is to expand your humor bone, to take notice of everything that is happening happening around, around, around you and, and make collections. In the travels that I have, I have books and notebooks of all of the funny stories that I have collected and have yet to see the light of day. So one of the things that I have seen is... Uh, and, and this is something that you can do. Um, you don't have to travel outside of the United States, but you can travel within within outside of your normal routines and just see the world with the eyes of the humor detective, somebody who can see things from outside of normal routine. And of course, uh, what kind of humor, uh, what kind of types of humor can you add to your life? Um, it's a self-deprecating humor. It's something that I love. And it works with audiences that I have found all over the world. It works in the United States. It works in Central, uh, Middle Asia, in Europe. Self-deprecating humor, if you do it masterfully uh, and you do it gently, you can bring rapport and you can build and you can build rapport with different audiences. Although when I first started teaching improv classes outside of the United States, um, a lot of people gave me the funny looks because, you know, it's especially in just Eastern Europe, they have this, um, this face, this in, impenetrable face that I cannot get through. And some people are still not talking to me years after my first improv class. So it's, it's a different humor all over the world. So I ask you to be patient. And just because it has worked in one part of the world, it will not there, but stay in the game and work to expand your humor bone. The other type of uh, humor that I think is excellent is observational humor. Just like I said about the drivers who try to uh, collect how many pedestrians they hit during the day. And of course, some pedestrians, they break the rules. So I don't know, maybe they have a competition between each other. So observational humor, find the differences between where you are, where you have been, and potentially where you're going and see what kind of humor you can collect. Unexpected humor unexpected humor <laughs> it's it's something that i spend a lot of time with kids and kids teach you the humor that you can never find on your own um for example my niece is a four-year-old and she said uncle mark um you know it looks like you have gained some weight i said well thanks <laughs> thanks young lady <laughs> you know that's that was unexpected and of course her mom comes over and says oh please please forgive us um i, I apologize so I have become literally a humor detective in the different types of humor. And I know that my journey is not over yet. And finally, one of my other most favorite type of humor is playful humor. 
And that is comes from part of my personality, part of the improv class that I teach. I know some of you have attended my improv class, some of your uh, students here over the last few years. So I invite everyone to join us. Um, it's a class every, every Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, just reach out to me. I'll be here for part of the meeting and I'll get you the, your complimentary pass. It's a diverse audiences not just from United States, but around the world. And it's similar to Toastmasters, but it's um, it's a lot of organic jokes. There's some dirty jokes that are 100% organic, but it really opens you up and opens um, and expands your humor bone. So if you have to tell me a dirty joke, I hope it's 100% organic. And I thank you all for listening and allowing me to speak today. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I have a question. You look so normal. Like, I can't see how tall or short you are, but you're not bald. You don't have a funny, you're not missing an arm or have burn on your face or something. And I'm thinking for people who are sort of normal-ish looking, um, <laughs> self-deprecating, help me get there. Um, what would be a self-deprecating category for you? <laughs> okay, okay. You know, um, <laughs> we're in the Zoom land. So I hope to everything that is holy that I don't get up. <laughs> 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 so, so I would say this, and the self-deprecating humor is, I have this, somebody told me, I have this million faces, you know, Mark Guy has million faces, and my faces, they, they contract and expand to the situation, and I know that I can move people to laughter with my face. Sometimes I make the most ridiculous face in response to somebody what somebody has said. And that's part of my entry into the self-deprecating humor. Um, and it has to be playful, right? You have to find that sweet spot. You know, what works for you? Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does work. And I, I love improv. That's why I love finding self-deprecating humor, observational, playful. Is because for many years, I never thought of myself as a humorous person or playful and it, it it's something i needed within myself to cultivate and to nurture and it gets easier and now you know as long as i can make my significant other laugh i think i'm i'm good you know if if she laughs once a day okay fine i can do it <laughs> that's it hey mark it's randall crosby uh hey randall hey good, hi mark good to yeah. I heard you were going to be here, so I definitely wanted to come in to visit the club and hear you. And I'm sorry I got here a little late, but I got to hear the last bit of your speech. And I'm definitely a regular at the improvs on Saturday morning. Uh, about a year and a half ago when I met Mark, it just, wow, the improv, I'm telling you, it's a life-changing thing. It's something about it uses part of the brain. We get to play like a child. Uh, yeah, Mark, uh, <clears throat> I mean... I don't really specifically have a question for you, but uh, I guess I'll make one up here on the spot. What what prompted you? What do you think brought you to this place of loving humor? Was it something you started as a young child, a young person? Did it come to you later in life? Was there like a pivotal moment or what do you attribute the humor bone that you created <laughs> for yourself to? Yeah, thank you, Randall. Um, I, I just wanted to perform better as a speaker on stages, online, in person. And I find that improv liberates you. It gives you this extra, it's like a portal to creativity that you always knew you had and you needed that key to open it. I feel that improv is a Tai Chi for the soul and CrossFit for the brain. And it really is that powerful. And I love it. It's every week. It's, I mean, I, I get to meet amazing people and be part of that, uh, part of that uh, community. So, yeah. And thank you for being part of it, Randall. You are awesome. Thank you. Gloria has a question. 
Yes, I'm being nosy, really. When <laughs> you said that you've had the opportunity to travel, are you physically traveling, going to places, presenting a passport, doing the thing, or is it a lot on Zoom? Because these days people will say, oh, I went to a club in Spain, or I did this in wherever, but it was only on Zoom. Or is it a combination of? What are you doing? And do you find the Zoom easier or harder from a U.S. perspective versus other countries? Okay. So excellent question, Gloria. It's good to see you, my friend. I haven't seen you in at least a year. Yes. <laughs> it's, always, it's always wonderful to see you. But I see you uh, doing podcasts and another wonderful things. It's a passport. I travel physically. And it's great. You know, I have been in one place for uh, quite some, so quite lo for a long time, and I have this great opportunity to do so. Uh, the online improv class uh, is online. So improv is online, but my travels are all physical. So it's great. Okay, great. Yeah. All Charles? right. Any other questions? Oh, okay. If not, 